Oh, I think I've got. Oh, is it, is it started? Oh, yeah. I think I think fix the up in. Always thirsty these days. Lucy, we're both on diets. We're taking. Uh, she's taking Ozempic. I'm taking Majaro. Uh huh. And I've lost nearly forty pounds. Wow. Twenty eight. And I'm nice. and I'm a. Uh, but I just have to keep hydrated all the time. I just always thirsty. Who starts off talking about how much his weight he's lost on the diet that he's been on, this special diet they've been on, and it, I just, it's not appropriate. I, I don't know, it's just like, oh, look how much weight I've lost. Uh, oh, yeah, my son's, you know, abused and murdered this uh, girl that they had a relationship with as well. They knew her. She stayed over at their house. No, it's not video. It's just audio, David. It's just audio. Mm -hmm. There's no video. Uh, it's only audio. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for meeting with us this morning. Um, Our pleasure. This has been a long few days, long week, or and I can imagine what it is for you yeah. guys. Full of lots of surprises. Yeah. We're in the seventh ring of hell. Uh, so... The reason we made the trip down here today is I know you spoke to uh, Alex, I think. Yeah, Alex, yeah. yeah, with Orange County and may have spoke to Corporal Ilgen that works with us. Is he this tall, slim guy? No, was he's he Orange County. Bald. He was, you, I think you may have talked to him out in the parking lot in yeah. Orange County. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bald guy, probably wearing a swat shirt. <laughs> no, that didn't work. That didn't. <laughs> there was somebody else I, I thought was from uh, Kissimmee PD, but. So, but since I'm the lead detective and he's my partner in the case, we kind of want to get eyes and talk to everybody that's involved. That's the reason. Really yeah. um, so, <sighs> the reason we're here is basically try to get a background of what you know about. Stefan and Jennifer's relationship and that sort of thing and stuff like that. So we can do it one of two ways. I can just give you guys the floor and you can let us know how, what their dynamic was, or I can do it question and answer wise, whatever's more comfortable for you. Well, if you do it question and answer wise, you'll get the answers that you wanted. If you let us. So I thought it's a shame for the dog because I've had to put her in the bathroom. It's not her fault. It, that bloody chihuahua's out there is just barking ram randomly but it's going to make a bark sit here and ramble on for half an hour you may not get what you, what you said to ask the question. fair enough fair enough for me we can fill in the gaps yes all right so um any idea how long stefan and jen have been in a relationship seven years seven years seven to eight years somewhere there okay and was it constant throughout those seven and eight years so seven or eight years in a relationship I think didn't the abuse actually start more or less straight away or not far into their relationship? Or on and off or <sighs> they were friends first. Close friends first, and then it, it evolved into a romantic relationship. Um I think probably the first eighteen months was his friendship and then it changed from there. And no, mm -hmm. we did not like the relationship. Why not? Didn't prove it. No. Why she was bad influence on it because of her, uh, of her uh, drugs. Well, drugs plus uh, I think she was uh, taking medications for depression, anxiety, what have you, and and I just didn't feel that she was going to be a good influence for her. She's bipolar. She's bisexual. She's a drug addict. She had a young child. She's bipolar. She's bisexual. And she's a drug addict. That's what they. That's what the mother thinks. That's what his mother thinks about Jen. Bipolar, bisexual, and a drug addict. The family was disapproving, and she was sharing those drugs with Stefan. And I don't approve of vaping. We don't do any drugs. We don't do drugs. I can't even take specified medication for pain because my body rejects them and I I get really really sick from it. So mm -hmm. 
straight with open heart surgery on Tylenol. Wow. So it's, um, so she says that she was sharing her drugs with Stefan. So, of course, it was all Jen's fault. It was all Jen's fault, not Stefan's fault. No, 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 no. Before Stefan met Jen, he wasn't taking any drugs of any kind. Of course not. No, no. It's all Jen's fault. And they both, they were both, they, they slept all the time. Yeah. And, and, she, and, you know, we had a hard enough time dealing with Stefan sleeping all the time. And now he's got a, uh, a relationship with somebody else that does it as well. It's just like they were feeding off of each other, none of it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I disapprove, I disapprove of a lot of Stephens. Well, that's the only people. thing, yeah, only thing her mother and I approved of together was the fact that we didn't approve of the relationship because if Jim started spiraling down when her holes of depression, she took Stefan with him. Mm -hmm. If he was depressed, he brought her in. And it was just always like a balancing act with those two. It's, this is not good. It's not a good dynamic. You know, when you said they were they were always sleeping, like constantly. Yeah. Was it be were they taking medicine to go sleeping, or no. they were just they were just well, they were baked out. Yeah. Well, Slep, uh, Stefan has a uh, uh, sleeping uh, disorder, sleep apnea. So uh, now this sleeping thing, this seems to be a big characteristic of their relationship. So they're sleeping a lot all the time um and of course part of that reason is because of the medication that they're taking so it turns out that actually jen although she had a job it was only part time she classes herself as disabled she's on benefits and she works part time so it wasn't a full-time job that she had so she was also sleeping all the time stefan's sleeping all the time then they were putting madeline on medications you know, they, their whole life seems to have been this whirl of drugs and uh, sleeping. So, you know, it's it, it's horrible. That poor little girl, that's what she was living with. He's been tested for it and, and his, uh, he would be uh, up all night and sleep all day okay. type of deal. And uh, we really didn't have that much physical interaction with them. Mm -hmm. These are things that we just observe from uh, from a distance, and you know, trying to talk to Stefan at times, and and but uh, we just really didn't have uh, uh, any any social activity we would speak of. When Stefan would be here in town, like what would his routine be? Would he just is he a homebody or he locked himself in his room, and we would see him uh, maybe you know once in a while tell him dinner's ready but he was constantly in his room all the time yeah he's like he's a man baby isn't he he's he's nearly 40 years old he's still acting like a teenager you know where he's saying when he lived with you know when he was staying with them he'd be in his bedroom all the time like teenagers do um and they'd call him down for dinner and that <laughs> it's like he never grew up is it is it's like the the boy who never grew up Stefan Stearns, like this sort of, and that's probably why I like young girls because he, he can't relate to real women. And Jen's like a mother to him, and their relationship is just characterized by taking drugs, you know, uh, prescription drugs, sleeping, you know, just being a Jen. I honestly think Jen doesn't even know what day it is, and I'm sure. Sometimes he's probably given her more drugs as well. It'd be easy for him to slip drugs in in either of them's um, drinks, etc. He was painting his little minis for Warhammer. Yeah, he's he spent obsessed a lot with of that time stuff. doing that. Um, a lot of time learning the new books as they came out. A lot of time online. Yeah, he was painting his Warhammer. My son used to do that. You know, when he was about eleven. He was painting his wall hammer. He was staying in his room, playing on his games. <laughs> I feel 21 as well, Jim. But the thing is, though, at least, you know, I don't... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This, this man is a different cup of tea. It's not how you feel inside. I mean, you're still functioning in your life, you know, looking after yourself, looking after your goats and things. 
this man they were treating him like an eight year old even though he's nearly 40. Uh, he did he did go play one hammer with the guys once a week tried to get him to go to the beach tried to get him to go to church tried to get him to go shooting with us no. did he give an excuse why that he wouldn't he want to go like just no, no motivation Mm -hmm. And he walked around with Jen on the phone on FaceTime all the time. I would be in the kitchen. I would look up and I would see Jen. And she's like, oh. and I look at her and her eyes are open. I said, Jen, are you baked? And she says, oh, yeah. Like, and this is recently or that, throughout that, that the years? The last few weeks, yeah. yeah. Okay. He, he wasn't, he, I brought him back in December because I was supporting him living there. And I didn't know that I was supporting the whole family. Mm -hmm. Again, Stephen was great of omitting information, not being transparent with me. And uh, I just reached the point and said, I can't, I can't afford to have you working for Disney. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's always a deficit in this budget for one reason or another, but somehow he had uh, expensive toys, what have you, where the money came for that. He needed it after he arrived here. Packages will arrive, and I said, well, I'm not giving him any money. Where the hell is it? Said, well, it's money I save it. I said, You're going Bohica. You know what Bohica is? It's an acronym. Bend over here, it comes again. Mm -hmm. And you know, so they were still paying for everything for him. You know, they were paying for his phone, they were uh, giving him money for petrol or blah de blah de blah. You know, he he wasn't supporting himself at all. Either they or Jen were paying for everything. Stefan didn't have any money because he wasn't working. Um, and I, I just want to say as well, I blame both these, you know, don't, because quite often the mum gets blamed, you know, people say, oh, he was a mummy's boy. But he was a mummy and daddy's boy. You know, it wasn't her that spoiled him. It was both of them. It was both of them enabled him. Terrible. He called me up and said, well, I've, you know, I'm short in funds. Can you, you know, sell me 150 bucks, send him back. But in meanwhile, now he's telling me he's got money in savings, which I didn't believe. Mm -hmm. You know, so where, where the money was coming from, I have no idea. But these packages just kept arriving. When you would support him, how would you get him money? I sell it. Okay. And I paid him, you know, I, you know, uh, one charge Jen rent and accept it. And then... In November of 2022, uh, the reason why I know that because I, I looked it up the other day. I said, how far back have I been paying rent there? But he started charging Stefan rent, even though he was sharing a room with Jen. Mm -hmm. And then they decided that they weren't going to be in a relationship anymore. And he took over a full room, and now I had to pay $600. And so this just kept escalating. He wasn't taking care of his car. Um, you know, and waiting for that shoe to drop. So finally, I just I said, I can't afford you to live there anymore, and I moved him back here. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had hoped that the year that he had spent at Disney, that he had matured and, and was now, uh, you know, accepting responsibility and had a disciplined routine, um, and that uh, I could bring him back here and help him maybe develop into something with a better career path than working for Disney forever and not, and not getting anywhere because mm -hmm. at $30,000 a year, he couldn't support himself if he, if he wanted to live on his own. Right. And uh, that that turned out to be a huge disappointment because he fell right back into his same MO, you know, locked himself in his room, you know, wouldn't help us around the house. And uh, we were like on eggshells because when he was here, it was always tension because of his sleep disorder and the dogs. Obviously, are not the quietest things. In the right. world. And, you know, they have their routine. We have our routine. So we let them. They say breed poodles, don't they? I believe they've got quite a lot of poodles. And uh, he was moaning, wasn't he, Stefan, that when he went to stay at his parents, he had to put up with all these. He's supposed to be an animal lover. Um, but he was moaning that when he went to his parents, he had to put up with all these poodles out in the evening and it's a uh, chaos with them and out of the morning it's chaos but for the most of the time they're uh in feeding time they're uh they're, they're quiet you know mm -hmm. but again that would disturb them and didn't, didn't want to cause a flare up with them so when he would when it would disturb him with the dogs was that during the daytime or was no, him well, trying to sleep at night oh it could be at any time 
Oh, okay. If any big money comes to the door, get a package, a rat farts in the yard, doesn't matter, they mm -hmm. hear it. I so if he's sleeping during the day and, and we're doing our daily routine, you know, there's going to be distraction. Distract. If I come in the house and go, hey, hey, I'm home, you know, they'd be a lot more. Right. So, but, you know, uh, I, I would just hope that, you know, he was sound, soundly sleeping and that he would just sleep through it, but occasionally you would hear a bark out from him. Or he had his headphones on. Yeah. So when you said you brought him back in December, do you remember when first part of December, end of December? I to look up, it'd be early part of December because I was trying to get him out of there. Uh, I thought it was the end of November. Uh, it could have been at the very end of November or the very first part of December because I didn't want to owe one another month's rent. Mm -hmm. I wanted them out of there. Did and but did he mention if they were split up at that time or if they were still? Well, they, yeah, they were uh, supposed to be supposed to be officially broken up. Mm -hmm. Did he ever say why they broke up? They just, well, I mean, yeah. yes, yes and no. I mean, Jen told me as recent, uh, recently as last week, she didn't want him as a partner. Mm -hmm. She realized that he was not going to be a good partner. But I assume that they both recognized that they wanted to go their separate ways. And I would say that occurred several months before because there was one time he mentioned he, he was socializing with somebody at Disney and that didn't. That didn't go well, over well or something. She didn't like that. So So I told him we both told him he would never get into a healthy relationship until he got away from her because what are you gonna do? You're renting a room, you're gonna bring a new woman into your room with your ex in the next room. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's a bad recipe. Did this this has, did this ever happen within the last seven years? Did they break up and get back together and that sort of thing? Or I think so. I, I seem to recollect that there was um, there might have been a pause in that relationship, maybe to the extent of how involved the relationship was, and maybe it became more social than more than more of a relationship type of thing. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, clueless as to exactly the extent of uh, how involved the relationship really was. I mean, I always thought it was just good friends and and you know, sex with benefit type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't know how committed they were to one another and that was going on all the way up until december well actually you think before december because like i said when he went into the room on his own that basically was probably the, the time uh, that the relationship ended so mm -hmm. uh, do you remember when that was you said I, november yeah i'm gonna try it let's see he left in december maybe three or four months before he pulled out of there i think okay. only paid three or, or four months and six hundred maybe three months I'd have to look it Do up. you know if when he came back here in December, was he ever making trips back to Kissimmee at all? There was, um, there was, I think three occasions he went back. This this last trip, mm -hmm. with when all this stuff happened, uh, a trip before that, and then he went back for Thanksgiving, or he was there for Thanksgiving. So, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. So he he wasn't invited to the family events and. Uh, but he was there at that time. Okay. Um, I'm assuming just visiting Jen, or was he visiting other people? He was visiting Jen. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know who else he would be associated with at that time. Okay. I don't think he had any relationships outside of Jen. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I think there was a, a time or two he mentioned that he was going to go out with some cast members after work. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Carol was one of them. Yeah. But, uh, that's the only that's the only time has he ever lived in Kissimmee prior to meeting Jen no no okay always here in Northport or has he lived out well we moved here we moved here May of 2020 so it was always at our home there or he lived here and then okay we finally got him out of here and it's, it's, and there was an opportunity for him to go live in Kissimmee okay but with Jen is yeah. my name of the yeah, yeah, not on his own. They were both supposed to be working at Disney together, but she can't do the job. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because they're the bipolar. Well, she doesn't. She doesn't. She want, doesn't want to lose her her state benefits. But depending on the type of work she had, back issues or something. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't do physical things. Now she's she did have a job as a concierge that didn't require any pressure or stress on her back or something. Mm -hmm. But there was always something that prevented her from working. 
couldn't do dog sitting, whatever, uh, whatever job it was, they would last them no more than two weeks. And then she'd be back. She's going to go to school for nursing. And I'm thinking, oh my God, save the world. Well, then she was going to get into graphic design. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad bought her an Apple computer thinking she was going to take these classes or online and that didn't last long either. And you're hearing this from, from her Stephen. Her. Oh, from both of them. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, so again, they're really down on Jen, you know, all the things, uh, oh, she was going to do this, then she was going to do that. And, you know, and I just, they just, they just literally, I mean, the thing is that when they were saying, oh, I don't know if it's friends with benefits and this, that and the other, but you know, they were together seven years. So it must have been quite a serious relationship. But of course, we all know now that Stefan was not there for Jen, was he? He wasn't in that relationship for Jen. He was in that relationship for Madeline. And that's probably why he even started the relationship. It was probably nothing to do with Jen. Jim, I don't know what you mean by a slave. The thing that we're basically telling you is a lot of it's hearsay from what we were told. We didn't physically observe this, mm -hmm. any of this stuff. Very, very little interaction. With them. Uh, they, when they were here, you know, they were either in Stefan's room. Maddie always slept with Debbie, but uh, they and Maddie floated around here, played with a dog, did, did things that little girls do with Debbie. We did some arts and crafts together. Teaching her, did he? Crocheting. Crocheting, yeah. So that was going to be my next question. So Jen and Maddie and Stefan uh, come, came here to visit yeah. at some point or a few times maybe. Yeah. But if he was here living here, she would actually come down. So, yeah, they'd met them several occasions. They had a relationship with Madeline. You know, at the end of the day, I suppose, if that you'll hear in a minute, he says that Madeline called Stefan dad. So technically they were grandma and granddad, weren't they, to Madeline? But they're very dismissive of her, very dismissive of her, even though they had built, you know, they must have had some sort of relationship with her. Okay. And, and, but again, very few trips. The last trip we saw of them was, and we didn't see, but I think we saw them early 2023 and then maybe for Thanksgiving 2022. Okay. And then when they were here, you're saying Stefan and Jen would sleep in or would hang out in Stefan's room. Mm -hmm. And then Maddie would sleep with you, yeah. be with you. Okay. Why, why is that? No. Number one, he's a slob. Number mm -hmm. two, he only has a queen size bed. Okay. And number three, I didn't think it was a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. and they were going to have her sleeping on the floor on, on a sleeping bag. And I said, I have a king size bed. I sleep on 36 inches of it. Mm -hmm. There's a whole side of a bed. Mm -hmm. Why can't she be comfortable? So I just insisted that she come in with me, and I had the dogs with me. So if she got up, as she, what Tim used to tell me was, you know, she would wake up in the middle of the night, she'd come and climb in bed with them. Mm -hmm. She said, "Well, I'm going to have the dogs here. If you get out of bed, you're going to you're going to rouse the dogs up." So, I got you. Did they ever talk about their sleeping arrangements at their house in Kissimmee? Just, just what I just told you that, mm -hmm. that if she had a, a bad dream or something, she would come in. And I told her, as as Maddie got older, because we've known Maddie for seven years, we've watched her grow up. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is very, this is very hard. But she, um, she was a sweet girl, she was. But then she started in the last year. She started showing signs of bipolar as well. And um, Jen was horrified by that. They were butting heads like two rams. They were fighting all the time. And they're, they're presenting a very different family dynamic than what they told us was going and on. And you witnessed them butting heads or? Um, no, I, I, I would be on the phone with Steph and I would hear them going at each other in the background. But that's, you know, and I would say, what's going on? Well, Matt and Jenny are at it again, you know, and I got to go, I got to go work this up, so. He would go be the peacekeeper. But I, I just put that down to puberty. She went to pu she started puberty at eleven. Right. So what did she say there? She was precocious. She was starting to be precocious. This is where she starts to in my honestly, when she said that, I just thought she, she's blaming Madeline as uh, you know, it's uh, let's just listen to that again. She is She's awful, this woman, isn't she? She is awful. 
you know, she may not have murdered Madeline, but the way she's talking about her and like making excuses. It, it, the thing is, her son abused this girl and murdered her. That's not anybody's fault. It's not even Jen's fault. You know, people can say what they like about Jen shouldn't have sent her up to the bedroom and she shouldn't. But she still, still didn't mean that Stefan had to do that. Stefan takes the responsibility for his own actions. Nobody can make you abuse a child. Oh, yeah, it was Jen's fault because she put us in the bed together. Well, I know that didn't help. And don't get me wrong, I'm not defending her for doing that. It was wrong. But he, you know, she didn't, you know, get hold of his what's it, you know. If, do you know what I mean? He did it. Take responsibility for it. Now, that is her son In the at the end of the day. I suppose you still love your son, whatever. I don't know. I hope I never have to find out, you know, what happens in that case. But the, the most thing you can do at least is accept his responsibility, you know, Admit that he is responsible for his actions. Nobody made him do it. Nobody put a gun to his head and made him do it. He did it. He did it. Other people like Jen might have made it easier for him by being thick and stupid or drugged out or selfish. But uh, they did not put a gun to his head and make him do it. He did it. It's his fault. It's not anybody else's fault. It's certainly not Madeline's fault. Let's go back a little bit to hear that again. Did they ever talk about their sleeping arrangements at their house in Kissimmee? Just just what I just told you. Mm -hmm. that, that if she had a, a bad dream or something, she would come in and I told her as as Maddie got older, because we've known Maddie for seven years and watched her grow up. I mean mm -hmm. this, is, this is very this is very hard but she um sweet girl she was but then she started in the last year she started showing signs of bipolar as well so she was a sweet girl she was a sweet girl but in the last year she started signs of uh, showing signs of bipolar for fuck's sake of course she started sh showing signs of bipolar she was showing signs of being abused by your son Honestly, that these people, you just think, what planet are they on? And um, Jen was horrified by that. They were butting heads like two rams. They were fighting all the time. And they're, they're presenting a very different family dynamic than what they told us was going and on. And you witnessed them butting heads? or? Um, no, I, I, I would be on the phone with Steph and I would hear them going at each other in the background. But that's... And I would say, what's going on? Well, Matt and Jenny are at it again, you know, and I got to go. I got to go break this up. So he would go be the peacekeeper. But I, I just put that down to puberty. She would be, she started. He was the peacekeeper. She just put it down to puberty. Good God. Awful woman. You need a level. Right. Hormones that you need, but anyhow. So she's saying she had her first period at 11. So she could well have been pregnant, Madeline. Well, cause, well, I doubt if she was on any, on the pill or anything like that. So, you know, <clears throat> he must have been using condoms, I suppose. I don't know, but two years of her, she'd been, had her periods for two years. It's, it's possible, isn't it? Very possible that she might have been pregnant. Um, she developed quickly, became pretty precocious. And other than that, I don't think she had a lot of friends at school. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a lot of friends. She was a very social person. She had been, if you remember, Paul Madeline didn't have a lot of friends, not a very social person, showing signs of bipolar, precocious. She's just this woman, you just want to slap her. Stephanie and Jim both told us that after she began developing physically, that there were some boys at school last <laughs> year that would push her up against the wall and grab a feel and bully her. Mm -hmm. And they were having a hard time with the school getting it stopped. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when they visited oh here, she 
was either out here or they were watching movies together. But it, when it came to sleepy time, she was definitely in, in, in Deb's room. Okay. Any time where either Jen and Maddie would be sleeping in that room without Stefan or... Okay, so the only person that would separate from them would be Maddie when she was sleeping with you. But... And, and like I say, she was always floating around because, you know, she was bored. Mm-hmm. And before that, as you see the holes, we had a TV there. And didn't have one in my room that was big, very big, but we moved that one. So we would, I would sit out here with Maddie when they were in there, and we'd watch TV together, too. We even got the Disney Channel for us, so she'd have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know if Maddie or Jen, when they were hang- sleeping here, were they taking, did they take medicine at night or anything like that that you know of? No, they... Or did Stefan take any, was his, has he been prescribed any medication? He has been prescribed an anti-anxiety medication and a uh, ADHD medication. We've got Adderall and something, Clomidine, some for sleeping. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what the first part of it is, but. Really didn't know his medical routines at all, hers or Jen's, other than the fact that. Uh, she was always changing medications. Mm-hmm. She was, uh, I, I think, taking medication for depressant and uh, anxiety and bipolar, but I don't know anything beyond that. She had a prescription for, for uh, mar- medicine, medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. And so she she vaped all the time and she shared it with Stephen. I wouldn't allow it in my house. I don't like the smell of it. Mm-hmm. I said, if you're gonna do that, you have to, you have to be outside. I just can't bring it in here. Now, after Stefan moved back here in December and he made the trips back to Kissimmee, would he drive the silver car? Your, your no, that's car? the first time he ever drove no, that silver no, no, car. No, no, no. He drove the silver car oh, because his car was in dire need of uh, servicing. So I said, last thing I wanted to do is go two hours north and be stranded. Now I'm dealing with a disabled car. Mm-hmm. So uh, I knew that car was up to make it, so I let him drive that car. What's wrong with his car? It's it's a uh, thousand miles over service. The brake jobs need to be done. He hasn't taken care of that car at all. It's probably going to need about two two to three thousand dollars worth of repair on it. I'm sure if mm-hmm. I take it in, if I take it in, I'm sure it's going to be two to three thousand dollars. AC was been acting up on, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, I I didn't trust it for long trips. If he was just commuting to, if he was in Kissimmee commuting to Disney, that's one thing, but not long trips. Right. Matter of fact, I had him tow it down. Yeah, I drive it down. So, is it safe to say this last time he came, and then maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas is when he took the silver car, or Thanksgiving? Too? So this last time, then um, um, he made it. He, when he came down here, he made he made a trip. Uh, when he first got down here, he made another trip back to get more stuff. So, okay. So that was one trip, and then there was a trip in trip in between. Um, I think I, I guess he went up for Christmas. Um, cause, uh, I think he was here for Thanksgiving. Um, and then there was this, this, this re- most recent trip. So as far as I know, I think it was just three trips. Now, when he would come back from there, would he have like loads of stuff? Like, I don't want to say furniture because the way it, it, it would just but... be leftover stuff that, you know, exactly. for whatever reason, he had a 10 foot truck mm-hmm. and just the front end of it and all of the, the back was available. So he ran a moving truck to grab. I read it. So, oh, okay. You know, it was more truck than he needed. Uh-huh. And why he didn't get everything he, he had was ridiculous because basically they came down to this typical most operandi. He waited till the last minute mm-hmm. and then didn't have enough time to put stuff up there or whatever, but he didn't bring everything back to them. Okay. Uh, did he say why he didn't grab his stuff? He didn't have to. Yeah. Well, basically, if he did, it wasn't enough. He didn't have enough time. It was like bullshit. I, mm-hmm. He had weeks to plan for this. You know, I kept on about that. He's completely opposite me. I, I, I start to organize stuff and get stuff done, not wait till the last minute, but he waited until the last minute. Very oh. frustrating. How long was he in Kissimmee when he made these trips? Well, he stayed up there. If he went up there, he went up, he went up there for the day. Maybe, yes. maybe he stayed up there a day or two. Mm-hmm. Usually, usually. Um, no, no rush to get back. No urgency to come back. This last time he went up here, uh, or, or to Kissimmee, did he say why he was going to Kissimmee? Her birthday. 
her birthday. Okay. Did he say he was invited to a party or anything like that? Or I and think Maddie he was asked, 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 asked him to him please come. come. And you heard I Maddie call? Okay. Yes. And any yeah, idea? Do you remember when that was? Because I, I know she had a party on Sunday. Do you know was when? Was it Saturday? Yes. Or was it? To make sure he was coming. Something was something odd with on Saturday. Right. Um, and um, I don't know if he was he invited on Saturday, or or, or did he just say Sunday I'm going to kiss him? No, we knew we knew I knew the week before because I found the okay. uh, the gifts for Maddie. Okay. Um, he seemed to be very upset. He was, he, matter of fact, he came to me and said, do you have any anxiety medication? I go, no, sorry, don't, don't have anything like that. Everything I have is for diabetes or, or heart. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Debbie and said, I don't have any. And then he came back and said, well, I found some four-year-old stuff. I said, oh, okay. But he was, he was, he had, he was suffering from uh, high anxiety, man. I don't know what he was stressed out about. When was this? Uh, sometime in the evening. I don't know. Oh, it's Saturday or Saturday. days prior to that? Saturday. Okay. Yeah. And then he's making, and, and then I, I guess he, he, the medication worked and he, and again, he, he looked like he was like very stressed out. Have you ever seen him like that before? <sighs> yes. Uh, when he was very stressed out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was like, uh, better tiptoe, not sure if he's going to blow up or not. You know, he seemed like he was calm enough, but, you know, I didn't know if anything could trigger him. Or mm -hmm. Did it seem like he was more in fear of something or scared of something or just... I, I You know, it, it was a different... Other than, you know, being really upset about something, it looked like he was stressed out over something that obviously he never shared any of his feelings with us. And I, I bet he was stressed out. I bet he was stressed out. My God, you know, <clears throat> wonder what, you know, well, will we ever find out, you know, what happened in the build up to it? Was there something that triggered it? Was it because she liked someone at school? Was it because she'd said she was pregnant? I mean, will we ever find the truth out? Well, we'll find a bit more out when the trial comes up, I think. I had no idea that it was stressing him out. Um, but something really had him upset. Angry upset or just not that type of upset? Not angry upset, but okay. just something worrisome. Just okay. seemed like there was something that was really preying on him and it was not settling well with him. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was told you guys he was going to Kissimmee or did he tell mom prior to that? Well, he was making, he was making plans to go to Kissimmee and he was, and, and I don't know exactly when this happened, whether he told me on Saturday, but I knew he was leaving Sunday because we talked about the expense of that trip and Jen, and he said, well, Jen's going to pay for the trip because I was, I was done paying for this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, she, and he said, well, Jen's going to pay for it. You know, I said, well, go down and fill up the car and I'll take care of that. That would be enough gas for him to get up and get back because that's all he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm assuming that the plans were submitted on Saturday, but you're telling me that you knew about it a week in advance. And maybe he started planning that a week in advance, but I, was, I wasn't aware of it until the last month. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have this fearful reaction earlier that week? After, it was just that Saturday? Yeah. Um, did he say how long he planned on staying in Kissimmee? A week. A week. Yeah. I was planning for, I, we were planning on him going to be, uh, to be gone for a week because we were welcoming the break. Mm -hmm. What do you buy her as a gift? You said you got her a gift? I had, I had ordered something and um, it, they looked marvelous. And, but then I got it and I think this is really probably too juvenile for me to wear. It's called Mermaid's Beads and it's made out of sea glass. And it was a, a dual color bracelet and they had the stud earrings and the same thing. And they, they were kind of opalescent. So they're really neat. It's by no goo and this, it's mermaid tears. But um, I said, you know, these are still in the box. I've never even worn them. I said, why spend money on something? This is something she would really like because I, I knew her enough to know this was something right up her alley. And I said, you know, this is, this is 
$90 worth of a gift, you know, that's just going to sit where it could be doing good someplace, somebody could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So just gave me the boxes and said, are you going to get for Apple? He said, no, I'll just take them like this. So. How did you guys come to hear about everything that happened on Monday? <clears throat> so I tried reaching Stefan. He called me when he got to Kissimmee Sunday. Any idea when he called you? Uh, I know Jack because I wrote out the timeline this morning. Okay. 6.48 p.m. Okay. Um, but then I noticed on some pass that he was out around 8.30, 8.48, and there were two some pass uh, tolls. And I said, well, maybe they had gone out or something. But I said, hmm, okay, that's a little weird. Um, so that uh, I tried to get a hold of him several times Monday Monday morning, or maybe noonish or so, maybe as late as two thirty ish or something, and then I get a call from him at three seventeen, mm -hmm. and his voice sounded a little off to me. Um, I thought, well, maybe he was just you know tired, and then maybe he didn't get a good night's sleep or what have you. And then during that conversation, he says, oh, by the way, I had a flat tire. <laughs> Radar goes up. I go, what do you mean you had a flat tire? Where could you have gotten a flat tire? Now, I'm not going to say you can't pick up a flat tire anywhere, mm -hmm. but he's just driving from here to the apartment and shouldn't be driving anywhere else, per se. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I just got a flat tire. Okay, where? 192. And, and, and then he described the fact that the tire was so flat that he he ran the rubber off the wheel. Okay, 192, plenty of places to pull over and you're driving the, the rubber off the wheel. Mm -hmm. So then he described that he was changed to the tire and that the, didn't have it set right and the jack collapsed somewhat and trapped his thumb between the frame and the, and the jack and didn't hurt himself severely. And I think the conversation lasted about three minutes. And I said, well, let's, let's get the car into to a tire place and, and see what's going to cost to re repair it. I'm sitting there counting. It's going to cost me several hundred dollars for this now. Mm -hmm. And and then that was it. And then 454. Um, I'm just getting out of the car, meeting a customer. I'm going to take him into a house and he calls. And he says, uh, I'm, in, I'm in route to... Maddie's grandmother, there's been an occurrence. I said, well, that's a strange word to use, but okay. Um, and then I'm thinking, well, this is weird. Two events in one afternoon, the flat tire and now this. And so he said, well, I, I took Maddie to school this morning and I dropped her off uh, just out from the school uh, because Maddie didn't want to be seen dropped off in front of the school because I'm not driving a cool enough car. I said, okay, well, understand that. Teenager, peer pressure, what have you. Mm -hmm. And he said, I watched her, I watched her walk towards the school down the rearview mirror as I pulled away. And so then he goes on to describe that she wasn't, uh, it's been reported that she wasn't at school later. We went to pick her up and uh, she wasn't there. Then we come to find out she hadn't been to school all day. And then uh, he starts to describe um, that the area is a high abduction area. It, kids, kids are stolen for abducted, kidnapped for sex trafficking, and um, um, that there's a good chance that she's been abducted. Mm -hmm. You know, typical questions. You know, well, what have you done to try to locate her? Have you contacted her old friends, social media? Where's her phone? Oh, she left her phone at, at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, she does that from time to time. And uh, it was a three minute conversation and he, he was he was sobbing. He was really sad and upset that he was holding himself responsible for this. Mm -hmm. Same routine that he did in that Tuesday interview. I think he was rehearsing it on me. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly the same routine, same explanation the whole deal. And so then I kept in touch with them throughout the evening because they were waiting for police to show up and, and it was hours and, and I just kept checking in, any news, any news. And then, um, and then that was it. So 
until Tuesday. And then I didn't talk to him again until until Tuesday, maybe it was the afternoon. And um, again, just trying to get an update, what's going on. And then, and then as the day expanded, then police were now more involved. And uh, there's interaction between, I guess, your department and, and the two of them. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Did when, backtracking to Monday. So you talked to him, you said you tried calling him. When you tried calling him, did it call go right to voicemail or did it ring a few times? Uh, probably they should have all that. I mean, let me get the, my notepad. Uh, and by the way, Jim had mentioned several times that Maddie was going through a phase where she didn't want to look cool, uncool, and that it had become their routine to drop her off one block from school and pick her up one block from school. And she told you this? Yes. Yes. And she never said anything about it being a high traffic area or anything like that. She just said you can, it's a straight shot. We can see the school. There's an overpass. We make sure nobody's in the overpass. You know. Mm-hmm. You know and so we just watched her. And then Stefan said he took her by himself and then in the interview, Jen said, we brought him off. Mm-hmm. She said it several times. And so I I don't know if, do you want any conjecture or no? The conjecture is that she and Maddie are the same size. Mm-hmm. She wore Maddie's clothes with the hoodie up to show them to cover the dark hair instead of the light hair. And that was Jen himself sitting at the church in the picture. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, from what we've heard, Maddie was already gone by that time. Mm-hmm. So this this elaborate charade put on for everybody's benefit. Mm-hmm. And she's cool, calm, and collected. And he's a he's a he's a sobbing, wet mess. Yeah. So now she starts casting aspersions that Jen's not upset enough. Uh, you know, she's calm and collected and he's a wet, sobbing mess. Her little boy, he's he's really upset. He's the only one who's genuinely upset about Madeline uh, disappearing. Well, yeah, because he's the one that's bloody strangled her or drugged her or done whatever he's done to her. Oh, my God, this woman. So Jen's all cool and collected. Well, Jen's like, bloody on another planet for a start but she's cool and collected in one way because she hasn't done anything to madeline he's sobbing a big sobbing wet mess because he's just bloody murdered her goodness me so my call to him at 225 was two seconds so no connection and then he called me at 317 and that conversation lasted three minutes and you said he was upset at that time or he seemed no he seemed he he seemed off and i said well maybe you know the anxiety medications or what have you was keeping him somewhat kind of flat monotone in a way mm-hmm. nothing oh, upbeat a about it and then oh matter of factly i we had a flat tire we talked about that and then and then did he plan on taking the car to a tire shop did you guys I control that him, plan or? i told i told it to i said you, he's driving on the donut and he, we both confirmed that, you know, the donut wouldn't last long and that, you know, he needed to get that quickly replaced. And I expected him to do it. I, I didn't expect it to, for him to do it that day because that's not Stefan's modus uh, operandi. I, I expected him to do it the next day. Uh, so then I didn't hear from him until he called me at 4.54. Mm-hmm. And that conversation lasted three minutes. And, you know, as I said, uh, I, I heard this 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 uh, story about him dropping a, her off at school and and the whole abduction thing and and I heard that even more later in the evening. But I I, kept, I, I thought to myself, how strange these two events happened, and, and, and within a short time of one another that afternoon. Did you question him about it or no? No, I didn't think about it. You know, when the call came in, he starts telling me that this is just a thought I had. It's kind of strange that. Coincidence that there were two two incidents like that in the, in that afternoon. Okay. So moving on, you spoke to him around four ish, and that's when he said Maddie's gone missing. Yeah, we're close to five. Okay. 
Um, and then you sp didn't speak to him again until the following day. Is that no, correct? I talked to him for seven minutes to 602. Okay. And 602 and then again for five minutes at 622. And is that... So he knows all the times precisely, doesn't he? Because probably because he's been, don't know if he was a, a, a police officer. He's been in law enforcement anyway. So, yeah, he's very precise with the times uh, that he spoke to Stefan. He's probably written it all down, you know, because he knew he would be, he was going to be interviewed. But I think he's, uh, he's, one thing I will say, I mean, he's, he's happy to talk. Both of them are happy to talk. That's good as far as the police are concerned, isn't it? Because they're not sort of not wanting to say anything to, um, you know, incriminate Stefan. In fact, if anything, the opposite. You know, although they're not really giving... Wait till you hear the end of this, uh, what she comes out with. I mean, you, you'll go mad. But... Um, so, you know, they're trying to sort of take the responsibility off him, but they're happy to talk about it. More than happy, aren't they? You know, they're like very voluble. They're not holding anything back. I'll give them that at least. And that's good for the police, isn't it? It's good for them to get all that information. But you know what I thought, definitely, although I know they're defending Stefan, I bet they're really quite relieved that he's never coming back to their house because it seemed like all he did was cost them money, cause problems. His room was a mess, blah de blah de blah So they they're already started clearing his room out. Well, he's not coming back, is he? He's never going to come back. So uh, they're probably glad that they can get all his stuff out, get all his shit out there, put some different shit in there get their own shit in there, put the bloody poodles in there or whatever. Um, and it's probably a relief. And then also, you know, never um, have, what's the word, never have to pay any more money for it because he, he's cost them a fortune. He's still costing them a fortune, even at the age of nearly 40. Just to get updates, or yeah. what's he? What's the conversation you're having? Well, it was me time? making the, it. was me. It, he called me at six oh two, and again, just briefing me, to, letting me know what's going on. Uh, there was an out call at two minutes at six eighteen, and then another one at six twenty two for five minutes. And both of those, I was making the calls, and then nothing again until Tuesday at twelve sixteen, three seconds there, and then. Out at 6:32, one minute. I'm not even sure if we had even a conversation. So that was that was, uh, and then after that, no more no more calls from his phone. Now Jen's called me on her phone. Okay, Did they tell you why. Um, there was a conversation about whether uh, the police wanted his phone and whether he should give it to him. And I said, Do you have any reason not to? Mm -hmm. And he said, No. And I said, Then give me your phone. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, isn't it? So they had this conversation where he said, oh, they want my phone. And he said, have you got any reason not to give it them? And he said, no. But of course he did. He had a big reason not to give him the phone. But he factory reset it, of course, didn't he, accidentally? And even his dad says, you know, that's bullshit. You know, you can't, I even, he said, I even, you'll see in a minute. He says, even though I'm not, very technical even i know that you can't factory reset a phone by accident you know um but of course stefan didn't want to give over his phone but you know what you have no choice you have no choice you can't say to the police i'm not handing my phone over you just can't um you just can't say that to the police can you they, they'll just subpoena you or whatever they'll arrest you and take it off you so stefan really if he was a bit more a bit more clever i don't know if he just didn't want to let go of his phone because he could have burnt it thrown it in a the river he, there's a lot buried it somewhere there's a lot of things he could have done with it uh, but he kept hold of it didn't he, he didn't want to give it away he could have said he lost it and, and you know, disposed of it, but he didn't want to do that. 
so anyway he did this factory reset thing and thought he was cleverer than everybody else but he wasn't let's get this cleared up you know what really upset me was in one of the conversations i had with him when it became apparent that he was going to be a person of interest i said well you had your phone you can document where you've been mm. oh i left my phone at home okay um uh, let's backtrack were you anywhere that a camera could have caught you what was where'd you go and uh it didn't sound like he went anywhere that a camera could track him in. so i said well well i understand that but i'm not sure you know where where a camera would have, would have been but um you know thinking he was innocent you know trying trying to help you know pinpoint where he was so he could document his whereabouts because of my understanding there was a two hour there was a two hour gap mm -hmm. between when he supposedly brought her off Stop. and then um when he returned home because he said he called jen at 10 17. Mm -hmm. and in that fact my understanding why he called jen at 10 17 was to get back into the community because she had to call him in. Mm -hmm. he didn't have his clicker okay is he tech savvy my impression no but i'm hearing you know hearsay from other people that he may have been but when he told me that he was doing a os update on his phone and it accidentally wiped out his phone i said i cried bullshit. Mm -hmm. you know but you know there's always that one one off it could be you know but when he starts saying we well, yeah, i i accidentally pressed the button to reset him, then i knew it was bullshit. That's not in the process of an OS update. You you just say yes, go ahead, and do it, and you leave it alone. And updates and let you know that your phone's been updated. End of story. None of this other bullshit. Do you pay for his phone, or does he pay for it? I pay for it. Do you want this coffee? Yeah. Would you put some cream in it? Blonde like you, you know. And uh... so yeah, he was still pay he was paying for his phone. He's nearly forty. This man is paying for his phone. Duke it in the microwave, microwave for 38 seconds. Um, how did you get to Kissimmee? Like, what made you go to Kissimmee? Okay, so uh, I got a call. Uh, I got a call at 9 30. Um, and then I think that's when uh, that discussion took place about it whether to give this phone to the police or not. I said, if you got an issue with it, give them the, give them the phone, give them the phone. And then I got a call, uh, and then I went to bed. I, I was 10 or something. I'm all tucked in the bed. I got the boys with me. And I, I may have been partially asleep because I had my phone in silent. And then uh, I woke up because the phone was vibrating. And then my, uh, well, my watch would have been in the office. So the phone was vibrating. By the time I got it, there was no connect. So then that was at 1042, and then I made an out call at 1043. And then I'm being, uh, the conversation was about, uh, you, you need to come up here. And who says that? Uh, they both think because they're on speaker. Okay. And Stefan said, hey, you need to come up here. And I said, okay. Um, I said, you know, we, so we discussed, you know, they were being kicked out. They didn't have a place to stay, so I said, "Well, we need to figure out where to where to go for uh, where to stay, what have you." And so uh, I'm jumping in the shower, packing a bag, talking to Dad, you know, making plans to leave, and I wish I did it uh, just after midnight. Um, I tried to make a call to them at 11:56. It went to voicemail, and then I I called her back at uh, now we're into Wednesday, so I called her back at 12 12 to let them know I was on my way. And uh, then I also called my wife because when I left, the front door, if you notice, has an electronic keypad on it. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's great. No. no. Okay. Thank you. Um, it wasn't working. And it's been, uh, it's electronic and it's batteries in there since the day we moved here. So four years old. So mm -hmm. when I tried to lock it, it's not flashing or anything. I did get it to lock, but I wanted her to know that, hey, if you go out, you're going to have to come back in through the garage door. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that if you had a clicker in here remote in your in your visor but you weren't going to be able to get in through the through the front door mm -hmm. um and then um uh, and then i told and then i got a call from them at 118 last for two minutes and then at 151 50 seconds because i arrived at the hotel 
what were they the conversation at the 118 area what was that conversation about just confirmation of where they were and where we were staying and, and the address of the hotel because okay. it was out off of west of uh, disney off the 420 and from what i understand did you pay for the hotel or did they pay for it? they paid for theirs uh and i paid for mine but then it said a prep pet friendly hotel or pet friendly if you pay 150 dollars for the night mm -hmm. okay so all right so i i paid for the for the dog to stay okay their dog yeah okay why well, so he paid for the dog he's paid home stefan was lucky wasn't he really he was so lucky that he had parents paying for him you know uh, I, I think Stefan, I don't think he's going to do that badly in prison because he's used to not doing anything for, I mean, apart from the fact he won't be able to abuse children anymore, which uh, I expect he'll miss. Um, but, you know, he's used to people doing things for him, isn't he? He's not an independent person. So he's in prison and he'll get fed three times a day. I mean, he was whinging about the pillow, wasn't he, in the cell? He probably will have a more comfortable bed now than he did then. Um, you know, <laughs> will he get the death penalty? This is uh, Florida, isn't he? He might get the death penalty, mightn't he? Yeah, he might. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. This man has had everything handed him on a plate since the day he was born. And what has he done with it? Instead of turning that round, you know, uh, thinking that he's a lucky person because he's had all this support, he's, he's just turned into a twonk. To reimburse him. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you got to the hotel, you had conversations with Jen and Stefan? And yeah, we were just greeting, you know, gave, gave Stefan a hug and, uh, you know, chit-chatted for a few minutes. I was busy checking in because they had already completed their check-in. Um, they went up to their room. They were on the opposite end of me, but we were on the same floor. I went out to the car, you know, parked my car, get my stuff and bring it in and go to my room. And then I went to their room, spent about 10 minutes with them, no more than 15. And then uh, I was heading back to my room to go to bed. What were the conversations when you were in their room? I don't really recall. It was just, uh, yeah, everybody settled in, everybody okay. You know, we'll just meet in the morning and, and uh, you know, see see what unfolds at that time. I'm sure there was going to be some more interviews or what have you. Mm -hmm. I planned to go to the office, our corporate offices in in, uh, in Orlando. So I, I planned to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was up uh, 6.30, 7 or so. 6.30, then I left the hotel around 7.30 to go to the office. Okay. When you left to go to the office, was Steven and Jen still there? As far as I know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I come to find out later when I get a phone call from Jen uh, around 10 o'clock, 9.48 or so, I think it was. Uh, uh, 9.49, she called me, it lasted for about a minute to tell me, ask me if Stephen was with me. Mm -hmm. I go, no. Well, he's not here. How long has he been gone? Maybe 25 minutes. Um, I said, okay, well, all right, maybe he's up running around, whatever. Um, so then I get a call from her about uh, at 10, 17. Uh, don't recall what that conversation was about. Then I, uh, there was another call 10, 47. And I think, uh, it, 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 matter of fact, I'm trying to recall what, what time we talked about his not being there. And then I called back and said, uh, well, I, I told her, she go down to the lobby. If he was gone for 25 minutes, go down to the lobby. Maybe he's down there. Mm -hmm. Seemed logical. Uh, then after I hung up, I go, I call her back and said, are your car keys there? And she said, no. I said, okay, interesting. So then I get a call back from her later and say that the detective had called and said they were going to come over within the hour uh, to, to visit with them. And I said, okay, I'm on my way. So I left the office and, and drove over there and mm -hmm. thinking, well, he's going to be in a world of hurt if he's not there when they come back uh, because they'll probably put a bolo out on him and then just decide to arrest him because he's wandering around. You know, what's he doing? Mm -hmm. So when you got back, was he there? No, he didn't show up for another 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. And then I 
Uh, do you know if Genscar has a GPS in it, nav system? It does, yes. Okay, well, that's part of his life. So, uh, you know, he came back in and he said, well, I got lost in the back roads of Disney, no GPS, I'm going to have you. And uh, I didn't think about this till later. I thought, wait a minute, Jen's Jen got a newer car. Most of them have a GPS system in it. So because he didn't have a phone, obviously he didn't have hers, um, he was trying to wind his way back to the hotel, uh, but couldn't because he didn't have a GPS when, in fact, he did have a GPS. Now, there was talks of that he may have came here that morning. Well, so uh, when I finally got in to see Alex Wednesday evening, um, he said, uh, what exit do you get off of when you uh, come, come back to Northport? tested my exit numbers and I said, uh, I think it's 179 Toledo Blade. And he said, did you know that Stefan was in Northport at 745 that morning? I said, really? No, I didn't. Then I later learned it was really 630-ish, mm -hmm. which meant that, uh, and I had my timeline all screwed up. I thought I went to, they parted their room at 330 when in fact it was more like 230. So. I was thinking, gosh, I just went to bed and then he turned around and got out of there and went down to down to Northport. Mm. But when I learned about that, um, I couldn't imagine why. And, and then Alex is telling me, well, we we have information that he went to your storage unit. So that led us down a rat hole. And then I found out that was completely wrong. That access storage uh, uh, facility had been accessed for two weeks. And that was me going to put the lock back on that I had incorrectly relocked my unit mm -hmm. two weeks ago, now almost three weeks ago. So that was that was wrong. The time of his entering Northport was wrong. It was really an hour earlier, hour and 15 minutes earlier, and he never went access the storage unit. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, he must have been really disappointed if he was coming to this house because he couldn't get in the front door and that door is locked. And he it's knew amazing. that... Uh, that if he came in, chances are he would put the dogs on high alert mm -hmm. and set them off, which would have got her up. And I asked her, I said, what would you have done if Stefan was standing in the middle of the house and you weren't expecting him? It's like, what are you doing here? And God knows what would have taken place at that point and why he Where's was here. Where's dad? Why are, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why did I go to, why did I go to Orlando? Because I can tell you the amount of time I spent with him, aggregately, mm -hmm. Three occasions, it was a total of 30, 35 minutes. That's about a time that I, I had spent with him. Because when he got back to that hotel room, the both of them went back to bed and they slept. Mm -hmm. And there was no waking the dead. So this is what I mean, they're just sleeping all the time. It's all about sedatives, you know, with them. I, that morning when Jen was sort of saying, you know, oh, she thought she saw Madeline getting ready or heard her getting ready. She just didn't have a clue. She was, you know, they're so drugged up all the time. They don't, she couldn't remember what had happened the day before, could she? And it sounds like Stefan's just as bad, you know, so they've gone to bed. He, he'll have taken sedatives to just stop him thinking about what he's just done. Jen's out of it just on, a, on the normal, you know, just, um, they're just sleeping all the time. And up until two o'clock, I'm trying to trying to get him to eat something. Jen and I went down and, and had some lunch, but uh, I have no idea why he was here, other than to get in the house to get something, maybe try to steal some money for me, maybe steal something of value, sell it, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea. So when you um, so on Tuesday, when he got eventually made it back to the hotel, you're saying you and Jen went to go eat, but Stefan didn't want to go. Or? No, you could wake him up. He was. He was out of it, dead to the world. Okay. Now, I was told by Northport PD when they came and talked to you, I'm assuming you, one night, uh, that you may have mentioned the dogs barking sometimes throughout the night. They went on high alert, at, and I looked at my watch as I was in here alone. 3.19 in the morning. I had all five of them sleeping with me since he wasn't here to sleep with the boys. Mm-hmm. They all went from dead asleep to springing up in the air and standing on all four feet, all of them looking at my window mm -hmm. and, and giving the war bark. That's not a war bark. That's mm -hmm. a wolf. Yeah. 
um, when they do it, it's a sound that that will make your skin wet to this box. And and I didn't have the gun in my room. I don't usually use it. Have I don't usually keep it in there. I had to come and look for a flashlight. I let all the dogs out here, and then I did not unlock the security lock on the door. I just took the flashlight and went like this to see if, if there was a critter in the yard. Mm-hmm. We have bobcats. We have all kinds of stuff out here. So didn't see anything in the yard. Didn't see anything out the front. Went and looked through the office window. Didn't see anything out there. So didn't see a car. I thought, okay, well, we have we must have had a critter, and I just missed it. Mm-hmm. You know, they dig holes and come under the fence and drive the dogs nuts. Rabbits, especially, we had one last night. And you're saying that your code to the storage facility was not used on that Tuesday? No, the, the storage unit, they, Northport Police told me was, uh, they misread it, but they said the last access, because I didn't, I didn't think Stefan had my access code, unless when we were there in December, he decided to memorize it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I keep it in my, in my contacts. Because uh, obviously I don't use it that often, I'm not going to commit to memory. But uh, I was there two weeks ago because they called me up and said, "Hey, you know, we're doing an audit. We we got an audit's going to happen, and we check all the units, and you didn't lock your unit properly. So you know, it's a slide it over, bolt it, and then it's got two holes. You drop your padlock in there, lock it. Well, apparently, I locked it on the outside. Mm. I didn't think I did, but anyway, it must have. So I went over there the next day and and uh, and uh, promptly locked it. So any reason why he would come here? Does he have any other friends or close people that he would? Well, I mean, he has a limited number of friends. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he was going to hook up with one of them. Frank being one of them. Uh, uh-huh. It's the one I, I know that he's uh, is closely associated with. And when he goes out, it's with him. And we haven't heard of anybody else that he's socializing with. So I'm assuming he would have gone out with Frank. But other than just gaining access to this house and there's there's no way you would have broken in here because mm-hmm. uh, impact windows not going to do that um and the front door not working so he was screwed loop tattoo i checked the car you know after the north court police left to see if there was any marks on the door to see if he was trying to try the private car open but mm-hmm. nope i didn't see any marks on it so he, I, he, I guess he was here for an hour and 15 minutes or so before he had to make tracks to get back to orlando but I have no idea what he did for that amount of time. Maybe he came down here thinking he would throw the police off. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they if they obviously found a way to track him or something, maybe they said, well, he disposed of the, the body or disposed of something down here, but I have no yeah. idea. Other than just coming here and stealing something from us. You don't know if he has his own credit cards or anything like that, do you? He has one, one maybe two credit cards at best that are his mm-hmm. and nothing else. I don't think he may have, he may have, I gave him access to a second Chase account that I, that I set up for him, but mm-hmm. it hasn't been used in for whatever time. So if he has that, it's doesn't have any money in the account. Mm-hmm. So other than that, that's the only thing I would know he had. I gave him, um, uh, he would have use of the gas card, but I had it made him fill it up and give me the card back. So he didn't have use of that. Mm-hmm. What banks does he have? Chase and... Well, he has a he has a second account that I set up, but he has his own account with uh, 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 Disney Partners. Credit Union. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't have any access to that, so I don't know what he's got in there. What he got. Have you looked to see if there was any phone activity on your account that you pay for anytime during that Monday Tuesday area? I didn't look at his account. Um, uh, to answer your question, no. But then uh, a Wednesday, uh, since he didn't have his phone, I had a spare phone that I used for business, mm-hmm. which I think you guys have, iPhone mini. And I said, here, use this until you get your phone back. Again, thinking everything's innocent and what have you. Um, and so I gave that to him around three o'clock Wednesday afternoon. I said, use this. And, and, and then um, we went downstairs and met with the detectives and then they were escorted away. And then the last, last, last time I 
saw the phone other than him calling me to mm -hmm. tell me that the detective said when they pull into the Orange County Operations Center, they're going to go straight back. And I go, oh, okay. And I'm to go to the left and park out in front of the main building. Mm -hmm. We're going there for the press conference. Mm -hmm. um, and then I get there and then I'm expecting to meet up with Jen and Stefan to go up to the press conference. And then when trying to reach them, Stefan's phone is dead at this point. It's turned off. Finally, finally, Jen responds to me, and they said they're making arrangements to go inside. You'll get a pass. They'll take you upstairs to the press conference. And by the time I got up there, it was over. And now I'm just trying to, where is everybody? Mm -hmm. And but the only call I, that came in, because I wiped out everything that I could think of to wipe out. Because if he's going to have access to that phone, like I've got my contacts in there where I put all my passwords and username and passwords. Uh, I know the store and passwords, but you know, I want quick access to it or something, whatever, relevant information. What are you gonna do? No. No, just no, just say. Just yeah. Say. Just tell me why. So uh, and then anything else that would have been uh confidential that I didn't want to have access. So he also Give him a card. He had a card. It might have even been what more than one. I sort of lost a bit of concentration there because, uh, well, you know why. So, um, yeah, seems like he gave him a, a card as well. I'm just going to play it another five minutes or so because trouble is after it goes on for a while, you do tend to lose concentration. And I think it's important that we listen to this all properly. So I'm going to carry on until the hour. So it's actually seven minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I deleted off of there. Because um, you know, I only expected them to use it for, for a short time because the police said in the lobby, hey, we're going to give your phone back, we're going to give your car back. Well, I knew what, I knew what that was about. They were, mm -hmm. they're going to escort him without handcuffing and what have you. They wanted him to be comfortable mm -hmm. and what have you. So. I didn't expect to lose my iPhone as a result of that. Which you should be able to get that iPhone back, but I'll double check and let you know. Well, I was going to the second that. Yeah. Because yeah. I asked Alec about it. He said, well, it's being transferred to Kissimmee. And, said, and I said, well, this is going to be a slow process. So anyway. No, so, we should be able to get you your iPhone back. Yeah. His other phone, no. No, no, no. I uh, didn't expect that. No. What about the car? The car, no. No. Yeah, yeah, we already know that. Yeah. I've, I've already kissed that goodbye. Okay. Okay. Um, we we use that as a poodle ambulance. Yes. Right. Okay. The, the silver car because the, you know, the dogs go to bed or they have some surgeries or the. Uh, so they want their car back, of course, but of course the car is evidence because Maddie. I don't know if I'd want that car back. Maddie was carried in that car, was she? Or uh, would, it, would you even want it back? I suppose it's just being practical. They said they use it as a poodle ambulance. You know, they need to get the poodles to the vets or whatever. But uh, I don't know that I, <laughs> I don't know that I would want that uh, poodle ambulance, David. Would you want it back, knowing that Maddie's body had been in there and in the boot? I think I'd, I'd be quite happy to see the back of that car, to be honest, and get a different poodle ambulance. The puppies are heavy. Mm -hmm. The back seat, you know, could be smeared with cute blood and what else, but it, we call it the poodle ambulance. Did when you gave Stephen this car to go to Kissimmee, clean inside? No, 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 no. no. It's the poodle ambulance. Uh, you know, we're not going to have that car detailed, you know, and then he, if he's using it, and of course, Debbie had a bunch of her stuff in it, but no, that part was not clean. Okay. And I and I said, well, if they're going to, if they're going, if, if forensics is going to go over that, I mean, you know, I tried to tell somebody. I said, you know, it's a poodle ambulance. There's going to be some leftover puke blood or what have you that we weren't able to get out of the seats because they're perforated. Mm -hmm. So somebody. Do you see what I mean about the way he's talking? You know, he's going on. Oh, it's a poodle ambulance. It's had a dead body in it of a 13-year-old girl. A 13 year old girl's dead body in it in the seat in the uh, passenger seat and in the boot and he he's just like oblivious to that it's weird man
I hope somebody doesn't get too excited when they hit hit on something, but it's animal blood mm -hmm. as far as I know. Okay. Have you talked to Steven oh, since he's been been. Arrested? No. We tried to set up a video visitation yesterday. It said we were confirmed. Uh, my, uh, my iPad, my iPhone crashed a couple of times when I'm trying to get on. And then finally solar got it. flares yesterday. What? what? They said we had three solar flares yesterday. Facebook went offline and a lot of people, a lot of Verizon went off and some other. And I thought, well, maybe that's what kicked us off yesterday. But when I finally got on it, uh, he wasn't there. So, you mm -hmm. know, I, 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 I kind of expected that could have happened because, again, uh, you know, they gave me a warning. They said, you know, if he's not available, he's not going to be available and won't, won't be there. But mm -hmm. I figure since I had confirmation, I haven't had any conversation whatsoever. Have you talked with Jen? The last conversation. Right, I'm going to stop there because he's going on to talk about the last time he spoke to Jen. And if you, I'll tell you, I mean, the, you know, it's a, it's a long interview. Um, we've listened to an hour and there's still um, not quite an hour left, but about 45 minutes left. And, um, you know, they say even more ridiculous things as time goes on. I just can't believe that he's so obsessed uh, about, so obsessed. <laughs> uh, 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 you having a bath? You come to have a bath? It's all right. I've nearly finished now. She's like probably like, oh, come and come and play, come and play with me. Spend some time with me. Get off the video. Um, yeah, you know, there's the, they want the car back. She's obsessed with getting the car back, and it's had a dead body in it. <laughs> Jim, we know we love you too, Jim. We love you too, but we just didn't know what you were going on about. But uh, I think, anyway, my little baby. Oh, look at this beautiful girl. She's such a beautiful girl. So, yeah, so the, this car, they're obsessed with getting it back and it's had Maddie's dead body in it. I, I, honest to God, they, you know, now they're obviously not short of a few, Bob. I mean, I know they need that car and I'm sure they do use it for the poodle ambulance or whatever. But, um, you know, it sounds like it was a cheap car. It wasn't an expensive car. It wasn't a new car. I don't mean look, I think I'd just be like, I'll keep the car. Or I'd just get it sold as soon as possible and get a different car. I wouldn't want that car that Madeline's dead body had been in. That's for sure. I definitely wouldn't have wanted to uh, go in that car again. You know, is it? It's horrible. <laughs> David, the goats, yeah, the goats. How are the goats, Jim? How are they? So, um, so that's it. So I'm going to draw it to a close there just because, uh, you know, I'm getting tired now and I think it's important to concentrate on what they're saying. Now, the part two I'll probably do tomorrow in a, just a normal live. I'm going to edit this live, uh, edit out all the, uh, the my singing in the Oasis bits and what have you, and just put this out as a normal video for people to watch. Um, but yeah, and I've still got to go. I've got, oh gosh, I've still got to, you know, go through the Mike and Miller affidavit, and also now all this stuff that the police have sent me, loads of it, and decide what I'm going to do with these photos. I, I, I said, I don't think I'm going to show the photos, maybe on, on this members next week or something. Uh, but they're, they're sort of distressing. I mean, they're not photos. They're not photos of their drawings and things that scribblings by Madeline. They're very, very sad. Very sad. Okay, so, and after all, you're my wonder wall. So I'm going to go and listen to some Oasis music to make me feel good. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So sleep well and take care of yourselves. And um, until I see you again. Yeah, you've got your... <laughs> oh.
Yeah, your donkey. Did you send me a picture of the donkey? I can't remember. You sent me a picture. But anyway, so thank you for watching. Not only you that are here with me, but Replay Crew and anyone who might be watching who doesn't join in the chat, <laughs> in the mad chat. It's been a bit of a mad chat tonight. I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, as always, may your God go with you. Now, Paul Madeline, I'm not going to, I was going to put a picture of Madeline on, but I'm not. I wait till, I, I, I need to do a little tribute video to Madeline that I can put on the end of any video that I do about her. If I get a chance tomorrow, I might uh, do that. Um, yeah, I need a little tribute video to Madeline. Poor Madeline, she just went through hell, didn't she? She went through hell. And all these people are in uh, care about is getting their car back that the dead girl's been in. Oh, honest to God, no wonder Stefan turned out the way he did. Anyway, adios. Mm -hmm.